Hey guys, welcome back to well, Not As Exotic Animals. Today, we're going to be talking about iguanas. Now, a specific iguana we're talking about are green iguana. Now, green iguanas are an invasive lizard down here in Florida. Um, they belong, they're native to Costa Rica. They are endangered, they're a protected species or something like that. So, basically, their big problem in Puerto Rico and Florida, those are two places I know that they're a big problem in. Um, so, basically, this one I caught specifically at a park down here in Florida. And I'm going to be telling you guys why it's not the best starter pet. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little baby. Now, first things first, how you're going to get yourself into getting one is... The most common case is this. You say, oh, so cute. Look at this cute little green lizard. No more than a foot long. Easy to keep a 10 gallon right here. Or 20 gallon right over there. 25. And then after a year, year and a half, they get around two, three feet long. And then that's when things start happening. It's so when you start getting bitten and you start getting whipped. It's because overall, right about then, excuse me, that's when they don't, when they're not afraid of you anymore. That's when they feel, oh, he's coming up to me, so I'll show him who's boss. So. Right here, this is a baby green iguana. Iguana, iguana is the scientific name. And I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons. So the pros are, well, there's no really pros. I mean, the good thing about an iguana is that they're really cool. They're a really nice display animal. And even when you do get the common, very docile animal, there's always going to be that wild animal into it. You need to remember that. See this baby? How he looks very nice and chill in my hand right now. I bet you in, if I let him go like this for just a little bit longer, he'd be out of my hand. I had to redo this kind of video for like four times because of that. So, he's going through shed, as you can see. Right here. So, yeah, um, like I said, this is around a foot long. When they're babies, like this baby, he's no more older than like a, two months. Um, a baby baby will be around like this big. But see how he's a little bit just under a foot to over a foot? See? He's like tip my middle finger to mid arm so yeah he's around the foot so another thing about these guys is when they get older when they get older like I said around we just talked about when they're around a year and a half now once they get around four feet they need a big cage I'm talking custom built you know You'll need a cage, probably, for an adult iguana, for a full-grown, you're going to want it to be at least, like, six, seven feet high, and three feet deep, and what I mean by deep is, like, okay, let me get a container, put this guy in, actually, okay, now let's say, Right here, this is the front of the cage. So let's say this were, so it's five inches tall, eight inches deep. So this is deep, and another huh? I'm not sure if it's eight, but let's say eight. Eight inches wide by 
eight inches deep and all this stuff. So basically that's what deep means. It is for you guys that are kind of like noob or new, new to this stuff. I like to call you guys newbies. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. So, like I said, you're gonna need a custom cage that big. And if you do have enough room for it, then I don't really see any problem. It's just during the breeding season, they get very, very aggressive. Now, I'm gonna tell you the pros. They are pretty animal, not gonna lie. They're green. That's probably the main reason why they're pretty popular. And also, they're pretty cheap, too. This guy right here, probably sell at most pet stores for under 10, 20 bucks. And on Craigslist and um, some other places, you can find them under five bucks. You can get them for like two, three bucks. So, very cheap and affordable animal. But the care, not cheap at all. I mean, in Florida, if you live in Florida and you have a big cage, then I see a problem. But there is one thing. You need to go step by step with the babies. When you get them as a baby. When you get them as a baby, you gotta start off small. Like I'm doing here. Start him off with a 10 gallon. And when he gets a little bit bigger, put him in a 20 gallon. Then when he gets a little bigger, I move him outside. But that's if I were to keep him. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep him. I mean, he's not eating right now. He kinda lost a little bit of weight. So, yeah, but I'm feeding him. I'm trying to feed him. Make sure of cabbage. Um, whenever you get the chance. Um, lettuce. And I give him, um, what else do I give him? I give him carrot, I give, and I, and I calcium dust it with this. And give him his vitamins and everything. I have a heating pad under his tank. That gives the hot spot around 90. And the cool spot, like, room temperature. I know, I know you want to run. I know what you're going to do. So, basically, and then these guys, another thing, is how big they get. They can get six, seven feet. Biggest one I ever heard being caught was six foot eleven. So, I'm pretty sure there is monster seven footers or seven, seven footers, you know? Ah, kind of had a study there. And I'm also going to be having a lot of new videos coming out. Um, but don't just look at me for what I said in this video. I'm not even sure what I said in this video. Is I'm just getting stuff out of the time I had. I didn't do research just now. I'm just getting stuff that what I do know prior to these guys. But overall, really cool. Um, oh, yeah. I was talking about color morphs just a little minute ago. But there is a there is a lot of color morphs. There's the... Um, there's the blues, there's the reds, there's the, um, there's the albinos, there's the hypos, you got the crimsons, you got the super crimsons, you also got, um, snows, you also got, I'm not sure, but I think there's melanistics, I'm not sure, or all black ones, so, yeah, very cool, animal I do recommend I do not recommend it I'm sorry but get one at your own risk that's what I'm saying do as much research I don't care if it's even a Kenyan Siamba I don't care do as much research as possible because you want the best life for this little bugger and for and for just overall because listen it I do enjoy to keep these animals but remember they came from the wild, I mean, like the wild caught ones. And you want to give them the best life as possible, you know? And the only thing that's going to be different is that there's no predators. Except for you, if they're not used to you yet. But after they get used to you, you're not a predator. You're a friend. You're, you know? So, very, very cool animal, not going to lie. There's a lot of other people you can check out. On them, you can t check out Ty's Lizards, Tom Crutch. There's a whole bunch of variety of people that work with these animals. I'm not saying that they're horrible animals, I'm not saying that they're um, great animals. 
I'm just saying, ah, who am I kidding? I love these things, but they're not the best starter pet. I'm just trying to open up some of my viewers that are new, but they want to get a cheap animal, and they look at an iguana, and they say, ooh, cool, I should get one of those. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe, and if you haven't went to go check out my Instagram, which I have daily posts on most of the time, it's at Maldonado's Exotic Animals with underscores. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe.